Let's work three problems related to one-pole low-pass filters together. In example one, we're asked what type of filter this is. It's a low-pass filter, but let me teach you a little trick to make that clear. Anytime you see a capacitor, you just need to remember that the high frequencies can go right through that capacitors, but the low frequencies are blocked. Since we have a capacitor here in the shunt configuration, the high frequencies go right through it, down to ground. Therefore, they're lost. The low frequencies make it through. Although we can see by inspection that this is a low-pass filter, let's derive the transfer function just to be sure. The transfer function is just the output voltage divided by the input voltage. In this case, I can use a voltage divider. We've got the impedance of the capacitor in the numerator, and we have the impedance of the entire circuit down here in the denominator. From the transfer function, I can see that we don't have any zeros, but we have one pole. That's characteristic of a low-pass filter. I can also see by inspection that as the frequency gets higher and higher, the transfer function gets smaller and smaller. As the frequency approaches zero, the transfer function just approaches one. In question B, we're asked to find the corner frequency. Let's first review what corner frequency means. In order to do that, I'll find the magnitude of the transfer function. We can use the Pythagorean theorem in both the numerator and the denominator in order to find the magnitude. If I make a plot of this transfer function's magnitude versus frequency, I'll find that it has the shape of a low-pass filter. That is, low frequencies pass through and high frequencies are blocked. The corner frequency is the dividing line between these two regions of operation. This occurs at the pole position when the denominator of the original transfer function equals zero. Taking s equals j omega and then isolating s in the denominator and setting the denominator equal to zero, I can find the pole position. Converting angular frequency to frequency, I have an equation relating corner frequency to resistance and capacitance. Let's solve this for capacitance. We can plug in one kilo ohms for the resistance and one kilohertz for the frequency. We find that the capacitance necessary here is 159 nanofarads. For part C, we're interested in the peak to peak output voltage. We're given that the input voltage is one volt peak to peak. Since the transfer function's magnitude is just the output voltage divided by the input voltage, we can just find the transfer function for each of these three cases here. Let's make a chart. If I substitute in 2 pi f for omega, I have everything I need to solve this equation for the three frequencies here. The transfer function is unitless. It just represents a ratio of one voltage to another. What I'm interested in finding here, though, is the output voltage, so the unit needs to be volts. Since our input voltage was just one volt peak to peak, I just need to add the label of volts here in order to find the output voltage with the proper units. What we notice here is that right at the corner frequency, the output voltage is 1 divided by square root of 2 times the input voltage. You might recognize that 0 0.707 as 1 divided by the square root of 2. That's significant because remember that power is related to the square of the voltage. So what this really tells us here is that at the corner frequency, half of the power is getting through the circuit or getting through the filter. If we're one decade lower in terms of frequency, we notice that almost all of the signal makes it through the filter. That's because it's a low-pass filter. If we're one decade away from the corner frequency in the other direction, that is, if we have a high frequency, you'll notice that almost none of the signal makes it through the filter. We've basically just looked at three representative values along this curve here. In example two, we're asked to make the same filter using an inductor instead of a capacitor. I already know the proper form for this filter from the previous video. We should have an inductor in series and a resistor in shunt. Low frequencies can make it right through that inductor, but it tends to block the high frequencies. It does the opposite of what a capacitor does. With our RC filter over here, the time constant was given by RC. For our LR filter over here, our time constant is given by L divided by R. Therefore, we can easily find the formula for a corner frequency over here. We know that for the filter to behave the same, in each of the two cases, the time constants have to equal one another. For the sake of having some value to choose over here on the right, I'm going to assume that the two resistors are the same, and then we'll calculate the inductance. Let's assume just for a moment that the two resistors will have the same value. We wind up with an inductance of 159 millihenries. 
I can then conclude that if I make a filter with a one kilo ohm resistor and 159 millihenry inductor, the filter would behave exactly the same way as my filter over here on the left that has a one kilo ohm resistor and 159 nanofarad capacitor. One thing you might notice about this inductor though is that it's a rather large inductor. If I were to go over to the rack here in the lab, I wouldn't be able to find it. The inductor is too large, but it's only the ratio of inductance to resistor that matters. I could choose a smaller resistor in order to try to make the inductor a little bit more manageable. I'm quickly running into a problem though. Originally I had an inductor that was too large. Now I have the opposite problem. I'm running into a resistor that's too small. That's a typical problem that you might run into when you try to make filters out of inductors and resistors. That's why RC filters are a little bit more common. In example three, we have a circuit very similar to that of example one, but I've added another resistor to it. Of course, we still have a one pole filter because we have only one reactive element here in the circuit, a capacitor. What I want to do here in this problem though is to show what this extra resistor does to the transfer function. Let's find it. We can use voltage division. We have our load resistor in parallel with the capacitor in the numerator, and then we have the whole circuit down here in the denominator. Let's expand out the circuit elements in parallel and then multiply everything through by one plus J omega RLC. Let's now substitute S equals J omega and try to isolate the pole in the denominator. To do that, I'm going to divide everything in this fraction by R RLC. As we can see, this is still a one pole filter, but our formula for the corner frequency is slightly different than it was when we only had one resistor. The presence of the load resistor has altered the position of the pole and consequently altered the corner frequency of the filter. You have to be careful about things like this when designing filters because you might not know what the load is going to be for your particular circuit. From this expression for the corner frequency given in radians per second, we can find an expression for the corner frequency in Hertz. All I need to do to answer question B is to substitute in three different values for our load resistor in order to see how the corner frequency is affected. Let's make a small chart here. If our load resistor is 100 ohms, the corner frequency is 11 kilohertz. If it's a kilo ohm, we get two kilohertz. If it's 10 kilo ohms, we get 1.1 kilohertz. And you might recall from the previous problem that if we have an infinite load resistor or the situation where we don't have a load resistor there at all, then our corner frequency was designed to be one kilohertz. The smaller the load resistor, the more current we draw through our filter. This has the effect of pushing our corner frequency higher. If this is a plot of the magnitude of our transfer function as a function of frequency, then lowering the load resistor has the effect of shifting this corner to higher frequencies.